Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and today I am doing a pretty fun video for me. Um, this is uh, once again a knife that I co-designed. Uh, this is the AVNT, same model as before. This is our second production run on these knives, and this time it's back in titanium with zirconium accents and still M390, still belt satin, but feels like a totally different knife in so many ways because of these material changes and, and subtle tweaks that we made. Um, so I'm going to review it um, in the sense that I'm going to talk about all the typical things I do in a review, but keep in mind I'm way too connected to this knife to possibly be unbiased. This is my project. I own the company behind this knife with my buddy Ryan Rimmer. Um, we designed this knife together and I can't remove myself from that. Uh, that is the reality. So. I'm going to talk looks, carry, cutting, ergos, all of those things uh, like I typically would in a review, um, but this time I'm more connected than ever to the knife, unless you count the first batch that we did. So there's a couple of changes. Um, I'll talk about those first, I guess, and then I'll go into what I typically would in a review. Um, these are still available for pre-order as of right now. I'll put that link down below in the description. Um, I'm shooting this on November 9th. This should go live either today or tomorrow. And we've still got a few slots available. Um, it's not unlimited. We're getting close to having to close the pre-order, but there are still some. So if you're interested in one of these, pre-order price is 350. Uh, that's gonna come packaged up and shipped to you. And before we ship these knives, we're also gonna ship a kind of a swag pack with a bunch of fun little odds and ends that you'll get for like as a thank you for pre-ordering um, and we also I think I don't remember if I shared it here on the channel or not I definitely shared it on Instagram on the left concepts so you can go back and watch it but Ryan and I did a little um, like recorded conversation that we had and we announced that we're gonna be offering one of our upcoming prototypes of our next model. It's called the RWB. We've got images of it on uh, Instagram. Renders, I should say. Those prototypes actually just finished and they're on the way to me as we speak. So you'll be seeing that here on the channel soon as well. Um, but we've got just a handful of prototypes of that model coming so that we can test out the model in its physical form um, so that we can send it to some reviewers to get thoughts and stuff. And one of those prototypes ultimately is going to go into the hands of somebody who pre-orders an AVNT on the pre-order that's open right now. So there's a bounty placed essentially right now. One of the orders will be picked at random and it's going to get to keep one of our prototype Loved Concepts RWBs, which I think is really exciting. Um, getting to keep a prototype knife to me is exciting. I've loved it any time that I've had the chance to score a prototype. It feels rare and exclusive and that's fun to me. Um, so hopefully that'll be fun. Plus we're going to give away an additional few like different swag packs, not the ones that'll come for everyone who pre-orders one, but we're putting together five more really cool swag packs with a bunch of left concept stuff. Those will also be like bountied out to five of the orders at random who've pre-ordered an AVNT. So um, that is still open. Again, the link will be down below. There's some fun things going on with it and uh, we're having a lot of fun with this kind of product release. It's just been a good time for us. Anyway, let's talk changes. So <clears throat> the first batch of the AVNT was all micarta options. We had three different colors of micarta, four different variations of the knife, technically speaking. Um, they were all mechanically identical. We just had two variations that were PVD coated for the liners, the hardware, everything, and those could be had with either green micarta or natural micarta. And then we had the belt satin versions, the same blade finish you'll see on this guy, and those could be had in black micarta or natural micarta with like uh, blasted hardware. <clears throat> so um, this time we've kept it much more simple. This is the version of the knife that is available. Um, we are coming in at $350 pre-order price on this guy and it's increased for two reasons. Um, our margins actually aren't better. I think they're slightly worse than they were on the first version. Cost of production has gone up. Um, that's an economy thing, but also our material selection has gone up a bit and our complexity in the build. So we have titanium scales that you can see have this micro milled pattern in them. Um, it was important to us to make this pattern deep enough that it would give you traction 
but not so rough that it would be annoying. Um, I don't like jimping. I don't like overly aggressive textures. This is the right, to me, amount of texture to where it feels grippy in the hand, but it's not snaggy on your pocket. It's not painful anywhere you hold it. Um, so yeah, we've got this micro milled titanium. And then you'll see our pivot collars, our zirconium on both sides, and the backspacer is zirconium. Um, I love the way that this turned out. <laughs> this is a, a variation of the knife that Ryan and I wanted to have in our own pockets, which is kind of the way we pick what variations we're going to do. Sorry, this blade is so dirty. I've been cutting into stuff all morning with this. Um, so anyway, the switch to titanium and zirconium um, drove that price up a little bit. It also drives the weight up a little bit. So if you are somebody who really wants the lightest possible knife in your pocket, which is me some of the time, um, there will be times where I'll still reach for the micarta AVNT. That, those micarta ones, were just under three ounces. They were like 2.98, something like that. Um, I weighed this this morning, finally. I ordered a like a gram scale, like a, a really precise, like what I assume drug dealers use scale from Amazon. And this was slightly too heavy for it. I think that one maxes out at like three and a half ounces for some reason. So every time I put this on, it just said overload. Luckily, I had also ordered a food scale, like a kitchen food scale, um, which is just a little less precise. It only goes to tenths instead of hundredths of an ounce um, or of a gram or I guess either. Um, and finally that arrived this morning. So I put this on. This came in for me at 4.2. I kept toggling between 4.1 and 4.2, depending on how I set it down. I'm gonna say 4.2 um, on my scale. That's what it looked at. I put that on the stories of uh, Luft Concepts Instagram this morning so people can see it sitting on the scale. So this is over an ounce heavier than the previous iterations of the knife in micarta. Um, is an ounce a lot of weight? To some people, yes. To some people, no. It's more than 25% heavier than the last version of the knife. Um, so that's substantial in percentage. You can feel if you hold them side by side, this feels much heavier than the micarta ones did. But if you look at it in isolation, to me, it's not a heavy knife either. Um, yeah. So that's going to be like one of the main differences is the the felt weight of this knife is substantially different from the first iteration of the knife. So if you're used to a micarta one, this one's going to feel heavy. Um, again, I'll reiterate, to me it doesn't feel like a heavy knife on its own. It just feels heavier than the other iterations were. So uh, that's really the main difference is the, the material change, the addition of pivot collars. Um, we did just ever so slightly tweak a couple of internal lockup things with Riat, like just literal like lockup face type geometry the, the slightest changes um, and I think it feels just a touch more solid than the first ones did a lot of that is also probably the, the material change as well titanium is a very different material than micarta so to have so much of the structure t change to something metal <laughs> instead of micarta which has a tendency to flex and expand small amounts but enough to make it feel like you can feel it on a knife this just feels more solid um, in every measurable way to me than the micarta ones did and do. Um, so that that's the big change is really just materials, the really tiny internal things just to refine it to the next level. Uh, this sun is really like going to be difficult for me. All right, let's talk. Um, Ergo's carry cutting action. I guess I'll also start with looks. That's not usually one of the ones that I like hit upon an official way, but I, I'll toot my own horn here for a second because I think this knife looks freaking phenomenal, especially with these scales, the way that this micro milling turned out. What we essentially took inspiration from on this was the Audi RS grills. Um, so if you've seen the grill pattern on like an Audi RS6 or even like a, I think the Volkswagen uses it on the Golf if you get a GTI or a Golf R. Um, maybe not the R. I don't know. It's, an, it's a sporty grill pattern used within the Volkswagen Auto Group, typically reserved for Audi RS cars. And so we took that and we just modified it slightly to make it kind of perfect for the lines of the knife. And then it's micro milled in. So you'll see this kind of flat surface um, is 
the what makes up the grill pattern i guess and then milled in you've got these like elongated hexagon type shapes and i think it looks sweet um, when you add to that the collars the fact that you've got this little bit of zerk showing i think is really fun looks really cool um, the zerk backspacer plays off of that well so aesthetically on a knife that obviously i already liked the looks of because i designed it um, i like it even more in this configuration i think it looks cooler than it did in micarta different micarta has its place i'm not <laughs> i'm not over micarta i still love micarta but um let's see if i can do another shift out of the sun a little bit um i'm like leaning in here anyway i love the looks of it i think um from the feedback that i've heard people seem a little more excited about the aesthetics on this run than they did on our first so i'll take that as a good sign that um, other people agree i think this, this looks cool um, all right so let's talk ergos um, the way that we designed the avnt is to be ergonomically sufficient for most hands um, i've seen people with much bigger hands than mine people with smaller hands than mine hold this knife and find it to be comfortable Obviously, ergos are subjective. It's going to depend on your hand. Um, but to me, the ergos on this knife are phenomenal. So we designed it with no jimping anywhere. I like ergos better than jimping. I think a knife should fit your hand before you start serrating it to grip in. So the kind of primary uh, functional grip is going to be right back here. We've got a mostly flat surface that's very neutral that your fingers will land onto. And then we've got a thumb ramp which comes up here into the blade. And when you put that together, the knife locks in. Um, the angles at play here, the way that your thumb has a, a perfect spot to land, the way that your fingers are isolated into a specific zone, the added texture from this micro milling, all of it comes together uh, to make this knife lock into my hand really well. I don't feel any need for jimping here. I don't feel any need to like <laughs> lock my hand in beyond the shape of the handle the shape of the handle is what's holding me in place here so i love that we also designed as you can see uh, for this forward kind of semi choil area which is rounded because of the shape of the flipper tab uh, being hidden underneath it but we designed it to be the perfect place to choke up so it is in essence functionally a forward choil um, the added benefit of that hidden flipper tab is it fills that space which makes it even more comfortable to choke up so in a kind of pinched forward grip this is how i honestly use the knife most often up here in the forward choil pinched up close right near where the blade begins or where the sharpened edge begins i should say um, this is where the knife for me is typically in hand i hold it back here often as well but i feel most control um, and kind of i don't know maneuverability I, I feel the best on the knife when i'm up here i love this grip on the avnt to me it's just about perfection for many of my cutting tasks so um, ergonomically i love this knife i designed it to work well in my hand so i should um, it also is comfortable in a draw cut this way so if i need to cut backwards through something that works in a reverse grip this knife is very comfortable for me i love holding this knife in a reverse grip sometimes i make cuts in this grip just to remind myself how much i like holding it this way and a reverse grip draw cut even that works and is comfortable and uh, i don't have any hot spots there's nothing poking me one of the beauties of a hidden flipper tab is not only that it makes that forward choil area very comfortable when you're using it but it also keeps there from being a flipper tab that's ever going to poke you in any grip um, if you have a, a typical flipper tab like many knives do where it's going to stick out somewhere like there that's a spot where you can't really land comfortably um, if you're changing up your grip in a cut to try to like get a better like to bear down on the knife that would isolate you to not be able to use that spot on the handle and here anywhere on the handle choked back choked forward there's nothing that is uncomfortable everything is smooth where it should be smooth you've got a little grip where you'd like some grip and it just comes together in a way that to me i think works really really well so ergonomically i love it i should um <laughs> let's talk action so on the micarta iterations of this knife the action was really good um, our blade is super thin in terms of geometry so there's not a ton of weight in the blade so this isn't going to be like a guillotine drop shutty knife 
but it's pretty freaking drop shutty. And the titanium one is just a little extra in that department compared to the micarta one. I've been carrying this one for, I think, 10 days now, if my math is right. Um, and so it's broken in and even right out of the box from Riat, the action was satisfying. But as these bearings have uh, kind of worn in a little bit and it's gotten just smoother and smoother, this thing impresses me. I'm very used to this knife model in terms of carrying the micarta versions. And so carrying this titanium one, it's just got a little special sauce in the action department compared to uh, what the micarta ones felt like. So I love that. Um, I think a lot of that is honestly just the structural rigidity of the material and the difference in felt weight. It just feels different um, in a way that I, I welcome. It's, it's fun to play with. So we've got multiple deployment methods here. We have the flipper tab, which becomes hidden when the knife is um, open, as you've seen. And then we've got the hole, which this hole can be used for middle finger flicking, which is the way that I primarily use a hole, but it can also be used to thumb flick. Um, so that's great for the thumb flickers out there. I do open this knife with my thumb sometimes. It's not like I never do it. Uh, I do prefer middle finger flicking. And if you know me, you know that that's just the case on all knives, but um, it middle finger flicks really, really well. The best place on the AVNT to middle finger flick is from the top of the hole, flicking kind of upwards and slightly out. It just fires that way. Um, but even if I'm down at the bottom of the hole, it middle finger flicks really well. It's not like you have to be up at the top of the hole. It just feels best in terms of like the detent balance geometrically to be up here. So I love that. I can middle finger flick with my ring finger. I guess that's a ring finger flick. I can pinky flick and it works. Like it's just a fun knife to fidget with because there's options on deployment. The flipper tab is dialed really, really well. We've got it set up here. Should I go in the sun? Is that cool? <laughs> We've got it set up here above the line of the pivot. So it just fulcrums really well. The action on this knife is fun. It's droppy to your thumb, a little shake down. It feels really, really good. This knife has not been apart. I haven't tuned it. This has stayed exactly the way it came from Riat to me. Um, bear in mind, when we take our shipment from Riat, we'll be quality controlling every single knife before it goes to its final home. Um, so if there are any that need tuning, we'll be tuning them personally, but it's also reassuring to me that the way that this came out of the box to me is just already dialed. Um, so yeah, action is super fun. Deployment methods are fun. And that's the way we designed it to be. Um, Ryan and I both like to fidget with our knives. So anyway, um, we've talked ergos and action. Let's talk cutting. So the blade on the AVNT is intentionally hollow ground, really, really thin. I can't get that lighting just right, can I? That's better. Um, we have a target thinness of like 13 to 15 thousandths behind the edge. Um, and we're right there. Some of them are even more like 12. <laughs> so it's a really thin blade, geometrically speaking. This hollow grind is ground tall on both sides. It comes up into like the middle of the hole. You can see where it terminates up here. And so with this super thin grind, this knife is designed to slice. Uh, we did not design this knife to be a chopper, to be like a outdoorsy camp knife. This is an EDC knife in the sense that most people in their EDC are doing tasks like processing cardboard, like maybe cutting an apple for their kids, like cutting through zip ties. It'll definitely do that. Um, <clears throat> it, it's not like, <laughs> I, I guess I want to be careful here. This knife is designed to be used and we don't want people to be afraid to use it, but a thin geometry blade is designed to slice well, not to chop or to pry. Um, so yeah, it's not a pry bar. Most knives aren't. That said, this knife is really, really good at slicing. And so when I've processed a lot of cardboard, which I have in general with this blade, because the same blade we had in our first run, um, but even with this particular one, I've just, I, I continually love to actually use this knife to cut with. Um, goes through zip ties really well, slices apples pretty well. Um, a lot of the things that I do regularly to kind of like 
judge how a knife cuts, this knife excels at. So I love that and I'm, I'm happy that I'm happy with my own knife and how it cuts and that I don't have to like sugarcoat how the blade performs. In terms of blade shape, um, this is one of those like it's almost hard to define blade shapes because man this sun is really not doing me any favors i'm gonna lean even further over um we have what's could almost be considered a tanto if so you'd probably call it a japanese tanto because it's not an abrupt point right here but it's more of a, a curve into the tanto so you've got a primary kind of flat of the edge and then you've got belly up to tip and it's uh, for me, a super functional shape. I just love the way that this shape performs. I love having a very acute and like real, almost typical knife tip for puncturing through things. I love having this like really almost abrupt belly here that I can use as a secondary tip to drag through things. If I'm cutting through cardboard, it almost functions like a Warncliffe where I can use that portion of the edge to make cuts. I don't have to pivot all the way up. And then this flat is just a beast for pushing through <laughs> sheets of things like cardboard, which people do a lot with EDC knives at this point. Um, man, this sun is not doing me favors. All right. Um, yeah, so cutting, I, I can hang my hat on how this knife cuts. I love the way this knife performs for me. Um, the feedback on how it cuts has been really good as well. And there's quite a few reviews of the first iteration of the knife. There's some coming of this new one. So you can see how other uh, less biased people talk about it as well. Um, all right, so that leaves us with carry. Um, this knife, my worry when we set out to do this texture on it, which looks cool in that lighting now, doesn't it? When we set out to do this texture pattern, my worry was that the clip was gonna feel a little bit snaggy in and out of pocket. For me, it has not. I've carried this knife now in, uh, I'm wearing like khaki chinos today. Um, I have carried it a bunch in jeans. It's been cold and rainy here in Southern California the last week or so, um, which is atypical for us, but that's had me in a lot of like thicker pants. This knife has been great um, in shorts. It's been great. I've even carried it in basketball shorts. It's been great. I've carried it in the waistband, in the pocket, back left pocket as a secondary, front right pocket as a primary. I've just been putting this knife everywhere and in and out of pocket. It's nice and smooth. I haven't had any issues with it snagging. Um, in terms of feel in pocket, it definitely feels heavier than the first iteration of the knife, but it doesn't feel like a heavy knife in pocket. Four ounces to me is not a, a heavy knife yet. Um, and so it's been really, really nice to carry for me. Um, the profile of the knife, as you'll see, is fairly slim for having such a kind of tall hole. We're not that wide overall. And because we've got the flipper tab that is geometrically designed to be hidden when the knife is open, that stays very in line. So we don't have anything jutting out over here. Everything is smooth on all of the lines of this knife. The crown spine makes it feel extra smooth in pocket. So to me, it carries really, really, really well. Um, wire clip, we went with again on this run. Uh, these will fit Lynch replacement clips if you don't prefer the wire clip. But to me, the wire clip is as good as carrying a pocket knife gets functionally. The loop over style means that we're getting real, real close to having absolutely no knife showing. There's just a, a tiny tip that sticks out of your pocket. Um, this clip... <laughs> for me is just functionally the best. Do I think other clips look prettier? Sure, yeah. And there will be knives that come from us at Left Concepts. If you look at the RWB, you can see there's a milled titanium clip on it. That seems more suited to that design. Um, on the AVNT, for now, the wire clip is still just where we feel that this knife should mechanically be. I don't know if that's the right word, but they just work so well. If I all the time, if I'm like getting in and out of the car, I have to be careful not to like brush up against the door of the car or the seat of the car or the leather steering wheel if I'm carrying a knife that has a pocket clip that isn't like this because they're snaggy, they're pokey, they catch on things. A wire clip is just so much less prone to catching on anything because everything about it is rounded and smooth and forgiving. Um, and I, I love that. I love that it just glances off of stuff. I love that if I'm tickling my seven-year-old daughter, 
I don't have to worry about it poking or prodding her if the knife is in my pocket. Um, for those reasons, it works really well. But it's also easily replaceable. Um, I think it's also pretty incognito. If you're in a place where you don't want your pocket to scream, I have a knife in me, this clip doesn't scream tactical aggressive knife. Um, it looks like it could be a clip on anything that could be in your pocket. And so I love wire clips. And like I said, there will be times and places where at Left Concepts we don't stick to the wire clip for forever, but they're just our favorite for the use case of this knife for what we've designed it to be, at least for now. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it carries really, really well. Um, it cuts really, really well. The action is super fun. There's deployment methods that make it even more fun. Um, the ergos fit my hand super well. I've heard good things from people with different hands than me that it fits their hands well. So to me, this knife accomplishes the things that Ryan and I set out to do with it. This knife is a, an excellent choice for everyday carry in the way that we everyday carry our knives. Um, I'm excited that there's other knives coming that for us will fit different use cases or will accentuate different parts of that same use case. Um, but for now, goodness, I love this knife. And I'm so stoked that we did it in this iteration because the titanium with the zirconium, the felt difference in those materials, the aesthetic difference, um, this knife feels like it's the same design, but it's a totally different knife, if that makes sense. Like the silhouette and the lines are the same. The functionality of the blade feels the same, but it doesn't feel like the same thing <laughs> um, as our micarta ones. So that's really, really exciting to me. Um, these should be shipping to customers in January within that calendar month. Um, so that's also really exciting. We, I'll speak really quickly philosophically to what we're trying to do here. On our first run, we, in order to make that run happen, needed to do a pre-order so that we could cover the cost of production. That's the way a lot of people are starting out in the knife world right now. One of my um, least favorite things about the enthusiast knife market right now is that it stays so heavily in a pre-order model even for brands that are established, because I don't love to do long pre-orders. Um, I do it often because it's the way to get the knives that I want, but I wish that the industry would get away from that. And I think it's, it's heading in that direction where buyers are becoming less and less tolerant for long drawn out pre-orders, especially for brands that aren't brand new. Um, if it's your first knife run, Sometimes it's a necessary evil and I get that. And people are like betting on you by doing a, a pre-order. And we so appreciate all the people that in our first pre-order did that because it was six, seven months until we delivered the knives and we knew that when we set out. So it takes a tremendous amount of patience for buyers. And I'm on the buyer end of it a lot because I buy a lot of knives still. Um, it's frustrating to wait, especially with sometimes uh, manufacturers dropping the ball a little bit and waits becoming even longer than you thought they would be. I just got my Evo 3.0 recently, a rotten design knife, and it was like a 14 month wait. <laughs> and it was just a deposit, and then I had to pay the remaining balance when it was ready to ship, which is a little better, but like still a, a pre order that long, it's frustrating on the receiving end of it. So when we did our first pre order, we had to. There was no other way to get that knife to market for us. I didn't have the money sitting in a bank account that I could just float it. That's not my reality. So that worked out, that was great. But we knew coming into our, our very next run, the last thing we wanted to do is have another six plus month wait pre-order. So what we did is we used the profit from the first run to cover the deposit and our operating costs to get to that point. And then we didn't initiate another pre-order until the knives were already under like underway in production. Not just like in a production queue, but we're like physically being worked on. <laughs> and we knew that our timeline was stable and solid and that they'd be delivered in half the time of most of the pre-orders that are still happening. So as we continue to evolve, our goal is to either shorten that time even further or get rid of it altogether to the point where we're just doing drops of knives that are ready to ship because I would prefer to buy a knife that way. That's what... I would like to see in the industry. And so we're trying to do that within our own company at Left Concepts. So that's what actually happens. Um, 
yeah. So anyway, um, the, the wait on this pre-order is much shorter than many others are. I hope that that's meaningful to people on the receiving end because to me it would be. Um, and if it's not to you, then fair enough. <laughs> uh, maybe you're someone who doesn't mind waiting, but I, I like instant gratification just as much as the next guy. So anyway, um, pre-order is open at the moment. There is a bounty for an RWB prototype and some swag packs for people who pre-order and these knives are going to be shipping in hopefully like a, a month and a half, two months from when I'm recording this right now, which is much better than telling you, hey, if you order one, it's going to be six, seven, eight months, um, in my opinion. Anyway, thank you guys for checking it out. This is the Luft AVNT in titanium and zirconium, and uh, I'm proud of it. I'm really happy with this knife. It's, uh, it's a really cool thing to be on this side of the industry now, to have a product that is mine. Um, and I don't want to diminish Ryan Rimmer, my partner, it's ours. Uh, but speaking personally, to be involved in this the way that I am, <laughs> and to like go to shows and be on the other side of the table than I was for so long, and to just have a knife that I designed in my pocket, that when people ask what I do, <laughs> uh, to be able to show them, this is what I do. Um, that's really, really cool to me. So I'm proud of this knife. I like it a lot and I've been really enjoying carrying it. I'm not going to stop now that I've done this video, but I did want to make sure I put this knife through its paces before recording it. Um, anyway, this has been a cool, fun journey. This is a half hour long video. So to any of you who made it this far, you're a legend. I appreciate you. And I'm going to switch spots for the next video I record today because I'm getting blasted by the sun. All right. Thank <laughs> you guys for watching. Have a good one. You're the best. See you on the next one.